Autumn is one season which shows us that change can be beautiful. I'm here at Chatfield Farms, Colorado to bring you the fifth of my series of spooky videos I'm posting throughout October, sharing some of my personal paranormal experiences every week through Halloween. For some quick thrills and chills, tune into today's video where a leisurely walk through the park can become a run, run for your life. life. It's Hi, I'm Christopher Allen Brewer. You may have seen me on any number of paranormal programs on Discovery Plus and Travel Channel. As a Lakota Sioux, I was raised with tribal beliefs regarding a spirit world, and I grew up with many paranormal experiences. In 2004, I met a man by the name of James Manda, who lived near a park where a tragic 737 plane crash occurred in the 90s. He was home when this happened, and remembers the force of the impact being like an earthquake. The park and surrounding area were littered with debris. All hands were lost, and a gazebo was built to house a memorial stone for the victims. A number of unsettling urban legends soon began to spring up. One of them concerned a rift between worlds, said to have opened up at the impact site. People avoided the park after dark, and I wanted to see for myself what others were experiencing. By the next year, I had moved in with James, and we began visiting the park together. We had heard from others how the energy in the park shifted in the evenings, night representing the unseen and the unknown, so we decided to visit then. We chose an evening when the veil between worlds was said to be at its most breachable. The first thing we noticed was a light near the gazebo, which began to flash, almost like Morse code. Out of respect, I read each of the names on the bronze memorial plaque aloud, after which, a strange fog began to drift in above the tree line. James began taking photos, some featuring what appeared to be faces and forms. We began hearing whispers, odd metallic sounds, and witnessed strange shadows moving about the ground from unknown sources. As we walked home, we could hear footsteps on the pavement behind us. Later that night, I woke up suddenly in a state of flight or fight. I went to get a glass of water, and in passing James I froze as I saw a transparent male figure standing over him. It was studying him, its hands moving over James's leg. I instinctively went on the defensive and swatted at it, at which point it dematerialized. I woke James up and told him what I'd seen. He had been mildly aware of a pressure on his leg. He thought I had been touching him with cold hands. The area where he had been touched was ice cold. Years later, during a live radio interview, we were talking about our experiences in the park when our interviewer told us he'd lost his wife in that crash. At another event, we met a man who had been to the hangar where they had tried reassembling the plane fragments in order to find out what had caused the crash. He gifted us some of the fragments to take care of. It was at first believed that a powerful wind shear had been responsible for the crash, until three years later, when US Air Flight 427 crashed in a similar manner, killing all 132 people on board. Two years after that, Eastwind Airlines Flight 517 almost suffered the same fatal accident, but were able to gain control. It was soon found that the cause of these accidents were due to a faulty rudder. The hauntings which many people experienced who lived near the park may have been the result of spirits from Flight 585 attempting to communicate the fact that a wind shear was not responsible, but instead a faulty rudder that would continue to be problematic. The story was featured in a 2017 episode of Scariest Night of My Life and a 2020 episode of The Believers. In both programs, different actors portray James and I in the reenactments. We still visit the park, but instead of bringing cameras and voice recorders, we bring flowers. Join me on Halloween for one last peek behind the veil when I'll bring you a final video from a former cemetery. Hope to scare you there. And for more stories, check out Selfies from the Underworld a Native American's record of the supernatural, available on Amazon.com. Until next time, thanks for watching, and happy haunting.